Welcome to Church of the Good Shepherd. I'm so glad you're joining us today for service. Let's uh, open our hearts uh, to the Lord in prayer as we prepare our hearts to meet with Him. Father, we thank You for this wonderful day, fresh new day that You have made that we can rejoice and be glad in. Thank You, Lord, that we can gather as Your people in this, the third week of Advent, to sit at Your feet, to listen to Your Word, to offer up our praises, thanksgiving, our prayers and intercession, but also, Lord, to come to your table to fellowship with you and with one another. We pray, Lord, that everything we do will be an act of worship unto you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As it's the third Sunday of Advent, as we have made it our custom, we're going to light the third candle, invite uh, KK and Tracy to come up and light the third Advent candle for us. I invite you to join us in praying this prayer. Uh, words are up here on the screen. Together we pray. God our Father, you gave to Zechariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord, and baptized them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptized into Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to grow strong in faith by the power of the Holy Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Let's stand as we worship the Lord together, and I turn the time over to Moses and the team. Let's prepare our hearts.
give him all our praises because he's so magnificent, so wonderful. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Don't see how great how great today in the days to come you experience him for yourself and you receive him for in Romans 10 verse 9 the word of God says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that our God has raised him from the dead you will be saved For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, whosoever believes will not perish, they will have eternal life. Lord, we confess with our lips that you are Lord, Lord Jesus, you are Lord. And we believe in our hearts that God has sent you to be born of a virgin, to die on the cross, and that you're raised again. Let's take the chorus again. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, who's 
whosoever believes will not perish, they shall As little children, we would dream of Christmas morn And all the gifts and toys we knew we'll find But we never realized a baby born one blessed night Gave us the greatest gift of our lives
as we come before our holy and our loving God, let us humble ourselves by praying the collect of purity as we desire to be cleansed by the Spirit so that we can worship Him in spirit and in truth. Together we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and during the season of Advent, we read the Ten Commandments as a reminder of what God has called His people to do. So, church, hear these commandments which God has given to His people and take them to heart. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. Together we respond. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bow down to any graven image. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honour your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet anything. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Church, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us now confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment, to live in love and peace with all men. Let us sit on you. Together we pray, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Let us be assured and receive the forgiveness that God offers all of us as I say these words of the absolution over us. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pray with me this collect for the third Sunday of Advent. The words are up on the screen. Almighty God, who sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people for the coming of your Son, inspire the ministers and stewards of your truth to turn our disobedient hearts to the law of love, that when he comes again in glory, we may stand with confidence before him as our judge who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as uh, we hear God's word read to us today. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who moan, 
to grant to those who moan in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of moaning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as the garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quote the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, he will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of God's, uh, uh, the, ho the Holy Gospel. The Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to John, reading from verses 6 through 8 and then 19 through 28. Glory to Christ our Saviour. John chapter 1, verses 6 to 8 and 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light but came to bear witness about the light. Verse 19. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one who uh, you, one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Our Pastor Kafun will come and share from God's Word uh, to, with, with us. Good morning. 
It's good to be here again. Wow, today is bright and really. How many of you have not been down to CIQ? Yay! How many of you are going again tonight? Yay, yay, right? <laughs> so see you there. Okay. Today's gospel, in fact, today you realize the collect um, and then the, even the, the, the collect and also the prayer, just now the Advent prayer and the gospel reading was about John the Baptist. So we learned about John the Baptist. He's an interesting guy. Well, he has strange fashion sense. If I thought mine is bad, I'm glad there's, there's this guy called John the Baptist. He dresses in camel's skin, or camel's hair. Okay. Then he eats strange things like locusts and wild honey. Well, think about that. Actually, not very, not very what, right? Um, we have a friend from, from Cambodia, Amos' friend, yeah. So, Jim Rasu, yeah. Do you all eat locusts? I know you all eat spiders. <laughs> right? <laughs> Serious. So, uh, yeah, we, we, post, we post picture with the spider. After that, we didn't eat it, okay? We just, we just pretended. Locusts, yeah. So that's John. Now, he, it, it seems that he lived in the wilderness and was able to preach to the people at Bethany across the Jordan. In fact, many came to him. According to Christianity Today, we learn about the first century baptism. Uh, in the book of Leviticus, God has instructed that Jews to cleanse themselves from in ritual impurities uh, contracted maybe through such acts as touching a corpse or a leper. Uh, washing primarily fulfilled the legal requirements of ritual purity so that Jews could sacrifice at the temple. Later on, uh, people whom we call God-fearers, uh, righteous Gentiles, who expressed a desire to be converted, uh, to convert to Judaism. So now, priests broadened the rites meaning and along with circumcision, performed baptism as a sign of covenant given to Abraham. So, which means that baptism then was mainly for purification or for new believers, con for people who convert into Judaism. Oh yeah, before I forget, um, we couldn't live stream up now. So if your friends are texting you and say, hey, no live stream, then tell them, hey, hey, don't come to church. Lah. Okay. <laughs> it will be uploaded later. Let them know. Yeah. Okay. So let me just, so that was explanation of baptism, right? So it was for purification or for uh, um, conversion. But John was calling people into a baptism of repentance. He was baptizing Jews. How do you convert Jews into Judaism? Ne? So it is not that. He was coming with a new message. And the Jews knew about this message. Now in Luke 3, we see how he goes around teaching and reprimanding people, including soldiers, uh, even uh, tax collectors. He was intriguing to listen to, and he was very convincing. In fact, to the point that people actually ask, hey, are you the Messiah? Are you the one we are waiting for? Okay, Messiah. What is the meaning of this word Messiah? I understand that some of us may not be so familiar with the Bible. Let me just take you quickly through the Bible. Now, in the beginning, God made heaven and earth and all that's good. However, human spurned God's good design and was separated from God. But God's pro God promised a descendant of Adam and Eve that would defeat Satan. Right at the beginning, God already promised that. Later, God spoke to Abraham, all right, come, take up your things, let's go to the promised land. Abraham went. Many years later, Israel went into Egypt, and eventually, somehow, things just happened. They became slaves in Egypt. That's why God had to send them someone to rescue them. God sent Moses to bring them across, out of Egypt, across the Red Sea, into the Promised Land. Well, then came judges, then came kings, and through history, Israel did not stay in the Promised Land in peace. There were wars, there were, they were defeated, there were exile, there was oppression. That's why Israel yearned for a deliverer. They want a saviour. 
They want someone who can bring them out. They want a king. They want a leader. They want a guide. They want something, salvation. They were looking for a Messiah. Okay? So, that's why when it happened. So, that's why they, they knew this person is coming. That's why when they saw, when the people saw, is, uh, saw John the Baptist, they asked, are you the one? Who are you? They kept asking. Are you the Christ? And then to their disappointment, he says, no, I am not the Christ. Then who are you? He says, I am the voice that Christ makes straight the way of the Lord. Make straight for this person. What does that mean? Someone else is coming. Someone more powerful, someone stronger. Someone, the strap of whose sandal John is unworthy to untie. John can't even take out his shoes. How powerful is this person? And John said, Someone standing among you whom you do not know. Wow, that person is here. The deliverer is here. The Messiah is here. Good news. Before long, Jesus came into the picture. He was baptized by John, and he also went on to do his ministry. One of the first ministries that was recorded, and probably the first one that he did, was to go back to his hometown to preach. He came to this page, flipped to this passage, and he read the same passage that was read to us by Yvonne, the one from Isaiah 61. I will just go through very quickly. The, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. This passage describes the Messiah, the new leader, and Jesus says, I am here to fulfill these scriptures. How wonderful you think about it, that your leader is like this. Wouldn't you like a leader like that? One that does not rule over you by oppressing you into unnecessary taxation. One who cares for your hurts and wounds and helps you to heal. One who sets you free from bondage. Don't you want a leader like this? Jesus says, I'm the one. We come to this line that says, this is the year of the Lord's favour. The, year Lord the year of the Lord's favour is also known as the year of Jubilee. Let me just give a quick um, summary about that. Most of us know seven days. The seventh day is known as Sabbath. Seven years. The seventh year is known as sabbatical year. That's why some of us take sabbatical leave. Fifty years. The 50th year is known as the year of Jubilee. According to WSB, during that year, all debts were cancelled. All land was returned to the original owners. The slaves were free and everybody was given a fresh new beginning. This was the Lord's way of balancing the economy and keeping the rich from exploiting the poor. So if you want to borrow money, borrow on the 49th year, 50 year, don't have to return. <laughs> It was a year of the reset button. Then everything all over again. How many of you want that? So many of the mistakes we made. So many things that have been so bad, I wish there was a reset button. And this is because of God's character. God says He loves justice. He hates robbery and wrong. That is God's character. That's why he's a God of many chances. Jesus came to show us that God is just and hates robbery and hates wrong. Let's see what Jesus does. Throughout the Gospels, we see that Jesus came. He came to feed 5,000. He came to feed the 4,000 on different occasions. He could meet the needs of people. He healed the sick. He healed the lame. The blind, the deaf, the dumb could speak. Come on. He even raised a few people from the dead. 
He set people free from demon possession. In fact, one time, he sent the demons into a herd of pigs. He showed, that people, he showed people how to love in truth. He was not a hypocrite. He wasn't saying things that people wanted to hear. He was telling them things that they needed to hear. And yet, they came for him. Jesus accepted children and women, poor and sick, the prostitutes, the lepers, all those were despised and judged. And by doing so, he showed a new way to God. After hanging out with Jesus, there is transformation in the lives of these people. Jesus showed that there is no prerequisite to come to God. It was a common denominator. It was nothing to do with age, not knowledge, not moral values, not money, definitely. It was purely through faith in Jesus. And because there was a common denominator, and that is as simple as believing in him, friend, Jesus is the good news. And so here we have, we have heard the good news. We know the good news is coming. Good news has come. What do we do with this good news? The passage Isaiah goes on to say that the anointed one, if you could remember Isaiah 61 verses 1, uh, you can put your finger there if you wanted to. He has come to give people beauty instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and they will be called trees of righteousness. They will be strong and beautiful. They will be a planting of the Lord. How many of you remember that song? He gave me beauty for ashes. That is the promise. God has called us and he has blessed us and we are in that everlasting covenant. We belong. We are this group of people that God has promised. And this group of people, we have a duty, we have a mission to build up the ancient ruins, to repair the ruined cities, the former devastations, and the devastations of many generations. Meaning, having now known the good news, we also want to bring good news to people. But just pause. I'm not here to say good news. Everybody run out and do evangelism immediately. By the way, let us not forget our Cambodian team is coming back today. And CIQ is also about talk, telling people about the good news. You know, as Christians, we know we are God's people. We are the ones whom he made the everlasting covenant with. We are the ones whom Isaiah was talking about in Isaiah 61, 18, uh, verses 8 to 10. We are blessed. Indeed, God has blessed us so much through Jesus. In him, we have salvation, we have righteousness, we have acceptance, we have healing, we have abundant life, we have hope, joy, peace, and we are loved. Really, we are all these things. And my question is this, to both Christians and people who have not received Jesus, do you really believe that these promises are for you? Come on, is God always there? Is God there when, results, when school results turn out bad? Is God there when marriage is on the rocks? When someone dear is ill beyond cure? Is God there when I'm trapped in bad habits? When I'm weighed down by anxiety? When my children suffer? When my adult children walk away? Is God really there? Then I'm telling you, my friends, He is. I recently hear of this testimony. Pastor brought in someone to teach us about healing prayer. So this testimony is not um, original, original, so I'm just saying this is third hand I'm passing to you. This is a person who had physical ailments. He went up for prayer. After pray, being prayed for, he wasn't healed. 
So he was angry. What kind of a God is this? I come for prayer, I'm still not healed. So what's the point of all these things? But there was a softening of the heart. You know, when God softens the heart, you can't see it. But something was changing within him. Some resentment was, he was putting down some resentment. He was beginning to forgive. And through these, you may say emotional, but through this, through this spiritual healing, emotional healing, it came through and he was physically healed. Healing has a process and God knows that process. We are the ones who want things and we want things fast. God, give me patience, give me now. We want to have our, we want to have things our way, the way we can see it, tangible. But God knows that healing has a process and this process will come in His way. I have another testimony which I shared yesterday, but I'm not using it today because while I was doing worship, God reminded me of something that he wants to, he, I felt He wanted me to share with you. I'm here to share with you a little bit of my story again. My good friend says, we know a lot, of your, a lot about you after, since, ever since you came back to Good Shepherd. Yes, know me more. Okay. <laughs> I came to this church when I was nine. When I was nine. Uh, I came from a, a, a Taoist Buddhist family background. So it was the Pai Pai background. Um, Christmas was a holiday within the school holidays. Wasted. <laughs> They get to enjoy public holiday. Okay, Christmas had no meaning for me. I very bad in my. I was very bad in my English. So when I was very young, watching television in English, not very helpful. Subtitles was in Malay, not very helpful. So, so Christmas had no meaning for me. I came to this church with because my neighbor brought me to this church and they were having a Christmas celebration. So they had um, shared testimonies, okay, about what Christmas means to you. And um, at that point, they wanted someone who could speak Mandarin. When I was much younger, my Mandarin is better than my English. In fact, my English was a learned language. Yeah, so I, I, English was very hard for me. Mr. My grandmother is that kind of English, and I really couldn't do English. So, <laughs> so. So she says, why don't you speak in, in, in Mandarin? I say, but say what? Then she says, just tell us what, what Christmas means to you. I blabbered something, like somebody said something, so I just interpret, I just translated what she said. But many years later, now that I'm an adult, I look back if, and, and I, I think about it. If somebody asks me to share with you what Christmas meant to me and what Christmas is now, then I'll tell you, Christmas meant nothing to me when I was younger. Christmas still means presence, and Christmas trees, which I never had, I mean, but until, until older. But Christmas, when I began to understand the Bible, is about someone, about God sending someone to earth to help me understand more about life, more about what God wants, and more about what God wants for me. And through that, I begin to have more purpose in life. I find my purpose in life. And when I don't do well and I beat myself up, I look back and I know there's a God who loves me. And life has its meaning. How do I know He loves me? The Bible records for me that He came knowingly to die. He came to die so that when we believe in Him, we are connected back to God. That's how much God loves me. And when I began to understand that, then I began to realize Christmas is beautiful. When I was younger, my responsibility was to burn joysticks. It's my duty every day to burn joysticks and chat. Nine years old, I came here Eight years ago, I became a Christian, right? That was my first sharing with you. Eight years ago, I became a Christian. Nine years ago, I came here. So I didn't understand what it was. But I knew where was Jesus. Jesus was in my heart. My parents, my family was like, no, this is a young girl. What does she know? 
continue to burn the joysticks. I burned the joysticks because Ten Commandments say, honour your father and mother. So I was trapped in there. What do I do? I was a child. I honour my father and mother. When I put the joysticks, I will tell God, God, I don't believe, huh? I just child only. Huh? <laughs> and I say, God, you see my heart, right? So I don't have to explain, right? So I child, huh? every day I child. But every day when I say, I say, God, I don't believe, huh? Mm. One day, I can't remember how long it took, my mother finally said, mm. You don't have to burn joysticks anymore. And yay! Of course, I'm not going to say, hey, I will still do it. No, la, I won't volunteer again. La. But in that sense, I was set free from this thing that I couldn't break up from. I mean, I wouldn't call it oppression or whatever, la, but it was... It was something that I was able to come out of in God's own timing without hurting my parents, without trying to be all righteous. You get what I'm saying, my friends? Good news is here. It will take its time to show up. You have to receive it. You have to take it in. It is God who will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up. It is not our job to cause things to grow. I can't make my, I mean, I probably could make my parents excuse me from, from burning joysticks, but I would burn many, many, I would hurt them so much. But God in his own ways make things happen. And I know it happens by prayer. What we can do is we sow and we sow in prayer. What happens when school results turn out bad, then let us pray and trust that God will guide you through your education journey. It's not about one school or one exam. God will guide you through that journey. That's for another story to tell. I've got a lot of stories to tell. Pastor, I'll stay here for a few years, right? I think, okay, I, let me slowly tell. <laughs> when marriage is on the rocks, then let us pray. Let us pray that God will humble both of us both you and your spouse, so that we can allow God to restore the relationship His way. When someone dear is ill, beyond cure, let us pray for strength to take care, to give the person that dignity even as the person dies. And we also know when someone is ill, not beyond cure, we can pray, Pak Chi is back, right? <laughs> When we are trapped in bad habits, let us pray and trust God to change us even as we surrender ourselves to Him. When we are weighed down by anxiety, let us pray and know that God understands. When our children suffer, when they are suffering because of illness or bad decisions, let us pray and trust that God's mercy is enough. When adult children go wayward, let us pray. Let us wait for the Holy Spirit to speak to them clearly and convict them and bring them back. There is hope. In Christ, there is hope. So let's take time during this Advent Christmas season to pause and to know Jesus because he is the one who has come to bring good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, not just put the handy plus. Jesus comes to, to give you antiseptic, to heal, the, to just take care of that wound, to bind it up back to wholeness. He will spend time with you. Jesus came to proclaim liberty, to open prison doors, to bring justice. When we know that in our heart, let us do the same in this world. Therefore, Christ has come. Good news, everyone. Amen.
thank you, Pastor Kafun, for reminding us that Jesus is the good news and the responsibility that we have to share the good news. Church, let us stand now as we say the Nicene Creed together to affirm our faith and to proclaim what we believe in. Together we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, He became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, He rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now sit on you as we prepare our hearts for the intercession. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come and bow humbly before you as we pray and intercede for the world and our church. Lord, we come to you trusting God that you are our refuge and our strength, our very present help in times of need. We want to pray for the world, in particular the tension and wars between Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Hamas, and many other countries. We pray for these tensions and violence to de-escalate, and for peace to prevail. Lord, we ask for your protection for people in the conflict zones, especially the vulnerable people who cannot flee, those with disabilities or the elderly. We also pray for access to essential supplies such as food, shelter and clean water. And we commit the leadership of these countries to you. We ask for wisdom, for com compassion, for calmness, and the desire for peace. We also want to pray for countries that are suffering from the aftermath of natural disasters. Pray that aid uh, that is needed will be uh, promptly given for peace and for protection. Lord, we also ask that you strengthen the churches and our brothers and sisters in those countries, that they will be a voice for peace and they will have the resources they need to help people who are vulnerable. God, we pray that your power will be revealed through the churches in these areas, bring a message of peace, love, hope in the midst of the darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We want to commit our nation of Singapore to you, in particular our healthcare system as our COVID-19 infections continue to rise. We pray for protection over the elderly and the vulnerable and for healing for those infected or unwell. We also want to remember our healthcare workers and give thanks for the incredible work that they are doing. Lord, we ask that you sustain them and keep them during this time. Give them energy and resilience as they continue their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also want to pray for the church as we celebrate Christmas with our Christmas in Queenstown event and our Christmas services. We pray for the message of Christ to be preached and for people present to be receptive to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that, Lord, they will receive your love and they will receive you into their lives in due time. We pray that the good news will bring light, bring hope to all those who are living in hopelessness and despair. And we also want to continue to pray for our mission team in Takeo, Cambodia. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can share the gospel, we can bring the Christmas message and show love to our brothers and sisters in Cambodia. Lord, we pray for those who have heard your word, that their hearts will be open to receive the gospel and be changed by your love. And we ask as you, uh, that you protect the mission team as they conclude their trip, bring them safely back to Singapore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we want to uphold those amongst us who are unwell, especially Karin Ko, Linda Thio, Andrew Lim, Robert Lim, Doris Wu, Peter Cheong, Madam Yong Po Ming, Marie Leong, Paul Ho and Jeremiah Sia as they undergo treatment and rehab. Lord, may your healing hand rest upon them 
and your life-giving power cleanse, purify, and restore them to full health. And Lord, we also want to rejoice that Pak Chi has been discharged, and we continue to pray for complete healing and strength as he continues his rehab. We also want to commit Robin's mother, Madam Lee Le Cheng, for her upcoming gastroscopy in March, and for her to accept you as her own personal Lord and Saviour. Lord, we also want to commit the members amongst us who are primary caregivers to young children and elderly parents. Lord, we ask that you refresh them, strengthen them, and give them a spirit of compassion and patience. We also want to pray for your hand of protection over Shauna and Fiona, Desmond and Evelyn, who are expecting their first child. We want to thank you for this precious gift of life you have given them, and we pray for your blessing to be upon the little one being formed in the womb. Guide the growth and prevent any complication or difficulty during the pregnancy or the birth. And Lord, as we look forward to Christmas, the holiday, the gifts, the presents, may we also be reminded of the first and greatest Christmas gift as you send your Son down from heaven to be born and to die for our sins. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, now is the time to share the peace. We are the body of Christ, in the one spirit we are all baptised into one body. Let us now then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us now shake hands and greet each other in the name of the Lord. It is now time for our uh, collect our tithes and offerings. This is time for us to honour God by giving back to Him and remind ourselves that all that we have belong to Him and are provided through His grace. Please use the QR code, uh, code on screen or you can also uh, choose to use the offertory boxes on your way out. If you are a visitor here with us, please do not feel obliged to give. I'll hand over the time back to the worship team. presenting to the Lord 
Father God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace towards us. Thank you especially as we approach the season of Christmas where we remember that God so loved the world that he gave. And in response to your giving of yourself to us, Lord, freely have we received, freely we give. Pray that these gifts of thanks and praise may be used for the work of your kingdom and the extension of the good news uh, or of uh, uh, extending the, the good news to others who need to hear it. We ask and pray all these things in your son's most precious name. Amen. Let's say this offertory sentence together. It's found on the screens. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, for He is your living Word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because in his coming as man, the day of our deliverance has dawned. And through him you will make all things new as he comes in power and triumph to judge the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He sit or kneel as we continue in prayer. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together we proclaim Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Invite you to pray this family prayer that Jesus uh, gave to us as a gift. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as you forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. As we pray this prayer of humble access, let us be reminded that it is only by His grace that we come to His table. We do not presume to come to this, your table, mercifully, Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Invite those of you who are Christians and baptized to come and receive communion, which we do by intention. The um, lay readers will give you the bread or the wafer, and you are to dip it in the chalice, the wine, as it goes by. If you're not a Christian, but you'd still like a prayer of blessing, you're welcome to come to the front and keep your hands clasped in prayer, and we will pray a prayer of blessing over you.
Shepherd King, please come and dwell with us. To the fields of grace, lead on. And then we will stand secure. Let us uh, conclude with prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. 
Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be your living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Draw your attention to an announcement. Tonight, of course, is the final night of uh, Christmas in Queenstown. You can still invite your friends to come. But next week, obviously, is the Christmas weekend. Our services on Saturday and Sunday, Saturday at 4, Sunday at 11, will be our regular service, and it's the fourth Sunday of Advent. If you want to come and receive Christmas communion, it's, at Christmas, uh, uh, it's on Christmas Eve at 10.30 p.m. Uh, we'll have an opportunity to sing Christmas carols uh, by candlelight. Uh, there'll be a service of Holy Communion, just similar to this. Uh, I'll preach a message about the Christmas uh, uh, gift that God has given us, right? That uh, um, God's love is manifest through uh, the sending of His Son, Jesus, as a little baby. So it's uh, largely an evangelistic sermon. If you have friends or neighbors or anyone you would like, to share the story of Christmas and especially the gospel to invite them to come for our uh, Christmas Eve service. So it starts at 10.30 and our plan is to end at midnight. So we always count down towards Christmas and then there'll be time of carol singing at the end of the service as well. So that's uh, our Christmas services. But you know, as much as our outreach here has been a real blessing to many and to myself especially, I've really enjoyed uh, all the efforts that have been put in, we thank those of you who've been part of the uh, uh, volunteers who have made it possible. There was also a group that went out uh, to the north of Singapore to bring the good news. I'm going to ask Pastor Agnes, where is she, uh, to come and share uh, a testimony of what God has done uh, through a group of our own members from Lakeside uh, CG who... Um, very fervently rehearsed their ukuleles and then went caroling uh, at the Singapore Christian home. Thank you, Church. Uh, yesterday morning was really like a dream come true for a group of 12 of us. Um, two months ago, Pastor Jeannie asked whether we can send a caroling team to St. Andrew's Nursing Home. And the word bedside ministry came in. And though Pastor Jeannie, I said, you've got to pray. We've never done this before. You have to pray if the people are willing to minister. And true enough, Uncle Pekki went out and asked. In the end, we actually managed to have 12 people who was willing to go forth. So the 12, in fact, 16 of us, we practiced for the last, uh, you know, we have four practices. We really worked on our song. We, we, I really told them how do we minister to the elderly. And we were all ready to go, except on the day before we were given the news that St. Andrew's Nursing Home locked down. We can't go in. And I was just telling the Lord, I said, Lord, you told me bedside ministry. I told them bedside ministry. You told me this is the thing to do. They practice. You told them us to prepare the biscuit. We pack 80 biscuit. You told us to bring the tower. We pack 30 tower. Why are we not going in? So the Lord said, wait. So I waited. Then I started to text Moses for Singapore Christian Home and um, Tony for St. Liu Elder Care. And I waited. So Moses later came back and said, Ken, come. There was a ward that was just reopened. A male ward that's been shut down for two weeks. But now they has just been reopened. The ward is safe. You can go in. So I was excited and I was like, Lord, bedside ministry, let's pray. But Moses also came back and said something. Children ward, can or not? <laughs> we were prepared for elderly. We were not prepared for children's ward. But God was so good that when we went in, we saw all the children in the wheelchair. We were caught. We have never seen things like this. But I remember that God made every one of them special. So during one of the portion, we were supposed to sing Cantonese songs, but they were children. I stopped and I said, Team, now turn to each of the children, one is to one, lay hand and pray for each of the children. I tell you, I'm really thankful that all of them were willing to go. One is to one to lay hand and pray for these children. Then I was asking, I said, now the reopen what? what is going to happen? 
So uh, we were going there and we were getting ready. So one of the therapist assistant came and he said, so which church are you from? So one of us said, Good Shepherd. Ah, I know, Jonathan. It's like, oh, okay. He said he knows and he didn't say Reverend Jonathan. He said Jonathan, okay. He said, yeah, he's the son of the vicar. Oh, vicar, ah, okay. Yeah, Canon. Oh, okay. Which one? Canon James Wong. So I said, Lord, we are all in. This is our territory. Open the doors. So in fact, this brother of us, he was really generous. He saw how we minister through caring. He saw us going into the wards. When he saw that we were really going in to pray, he started to run to ward number two and number three. When we enter, he said, this one Cantonese, that one Malay, this one Hokkien, pray. So straight away, ward two and ward three, we went in. Caroling was just the opening. The real ministry was really praying. One of the people that we were praying for, this old uncle, we prayed, he was tearing. So I was blessing him and about to walk away. Then the Lord led me to come back to him. And I prayed for him again, he teared some more. So I said, Lord, what's going on? So I was prepared to walk. Then I came back to him and I looked at him. I said, uncle, do you want to ask Jesus into your life? This old man looked at me, cannot speak. So we told him, I, I will pray the sinner's prayer, you repeat after me. You know, there's one thing praying the sinner's prayer when you're well, when you're good. It's another thing to pray the sinner's prayer when you're really flat on the bed and there's no one to look out for you. And that was how we led him to say that Christ has come, hope has come. Now between you and God, there is no barrier. Christ has come for all of us. Really want to encourage all of you to really keep your hope up. Today's message, Christ has come. Things will be happening. My question to you is, church, are you ready? Are you ready? You know Jonathan, right? Ah, okay. You know Reverend Jonathan, right? Yeah. If the pastor said go, let's prepare to go. Yes? Amen. Thank you, Agnes. It's a testament to God at work through us. Even our uh, five loaves and two fish, you know, God can multiply to feed 5,000. And as we are obedient and we just offer whatever God has given us, the Lord, we trust the Lord will use. So thank you, those of you who went in that group. We're going to ask the worship team to come up. Let's pray a closing prayer and then we will, I'll pray a prayer of benediction over all of us. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day once again. Thank you, Lord, that as we have come and heard your word, that you have challenged us in ways big and small. Send us out into the world to do your good work and to do your good will. We ask and pray in your Son's most precious name. And all God's people say, Amen. Receive the blessing of God. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our closing song. Splendor of the King
Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. The service is over. Thank you all for coming. Uh, there are refreshments prepared outside for all to enjoy. And for any of us who would like to be prayed for by our pastors, uh, feel free to come to the front. Our pastor, Reverend Dr. Jonathan Wong, will be here to pray for you. And for the rest of us, we hope to see you uh, tonight at Christmas in Queenstown or next week. Goodbye.